I um I first watched Paul Sykes at large. That that fella there. In the summer of um it was about June or July 2000, 2012. Uh coming up for ten years. And I spent three years obsessing over it. And then 2015, I decided to write a book. Now, um, at the start, I didn't know how, but um, I was going to do this with, um, well, I, I did interview Paul's only sibling, Kay. And um, obviously, all of yous are, have, well, anyone who's read the, the Paul Sykes books um, will have seen her input biggest chapter in the book um, and then she kind of decided that it was too much so but um, before before she decided that you know it was bringing a lot of bad memories to her which I fully understood and um, you know wished her well but uh, I myself and Kay we went to see um, we went to see the makers of Paul Sykes at Large. Now, myself and Kay, we met um, Roger Greenwood and Nick Lord, who put together that iconic document, unforgettable documentary. Uh, God, the greatest documentary I've ever seen. Um, I probably have watched that over a hundred times. Seriously, in the last nine and a half years, oh, I wouldn't like to think how much I've watched that, and um, and and I still watch it now and again. Every couple of months, I watch it. And um, one of the things that kind of stuck in my mind <clears throat> when I, when I was with Roger Greenwood and Nick Lord was, I said, "Look, I'm blown away with this documentary." Um, I'm going to write a book on it. So myself and Kay met Roger Greenwood and Nick Lord in Harrogate. Uh, the reason being we met him there, it was um, in a hotel, probably the poshest hotel in, uh, in Harrogate, and it was called The Majestic. And uh, the reason being was that was where Paul used to meet them because they live in... Um, where did he live? Otley or somewhere, I think it was. Uh, so Paul, being from uh, Wakefield, I suppose that was halfway or, you know. But anyway, that's where they used to meet him to discuss about me making this documentary. And, uh, you know, I spent a couple of hours with Roger Greenwood and Nick Lord, but particularly Roger Greenwood. And uh, I'll never forget, it was the December... It was the week. <clears throat> it was the week that um, that Anthony Joshua fought Dillian White for the British and the Commonwealth heavyweight titles, which um, which was what Paul Sykes fought John o Gardner for, and it was pay per view there. So that gives you an inkling to how big Sykes v Gardner would have been. I've actually got the fight poster there, the original one. So anyway. I'm sat talking to Roger Greenwood and at first he was going to be in on it um, and then he just decided, he's, he just basically, he said, well, what's in it for us? Uh, but I'll never forget some of the words, because I totally get it. Listen, he's an author, um, he's a filmmaker, he's, you know, he's been about and uh, he could see my passion. He could see this kid I'm not a young kid, how old was I then? 35. So he could see, and he sat, sat back with his glass of red wine. And he said to me, Yeah, but Jamie, you're gonna do this, and you and he said, But you're not an author, are you? And I was like, I'd never written any book then. And uh he uh very pleasant, very nice. 
you know, he he, uh, he brought along some of the old things he showed me regarding Paul. He uh, he showed me, he actually showed me the, it was like um, a program for the very famous Lups of Boys Club night. Um, Kay was showing me pictures that no one had ever seen before. And um, one of the things um, I had in my possession was 37 photos of Paul Sykes, which no one's ever, ever seen, or the public for that matter. And uh, when when Kay said she didn't want to be involved anymore because it brought a fibromyalgia up and a stress and thinking of this brother who would give her so much torment, I totally got it and I, I totally respected it. Um, and I... I deleted the 37 photos that I had in my possession. Um, so I just did that with respect um, because it wasn't my place to, you know, they weren't, they weren't mine. Um, I know a lot of people would have greatly been interested in them. I know certain people have said to me in the past who've known I've got them have said, did you really delete them? And I said, yeah, I did. But um, yeah, Roger Greenwood said to me, with a smile on his face, he said, but you're not an author. And I was like, talking a good game. But reality was I wasn't. Never done a book in my life. I left school with no education. I left school without one um, exam to my name. But what I did do, obviously I've, I've educated myself since. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not banging on about it. I'm not wanting um, a pat on the back or nothing. But since then, uh, you know, six years, next week, maybe six, two or three weeks off, six years to the day. Um, so I've done, produced six, sorry. Um, so the six Paul Sykes books now, Paul done the first one, Sweet Agony. Uh, I then did um, Unfinished Agony, Fervor Agony and Final Agony. Rob Breton done It's Sharks, that there. And um, Matthew Oakley uh, very recently, very cleverly done. Yes, Paul. So... I've, and I get a mention in that actually, thank you Matthew, if you're watching, um, well you will be watching because I'm going to send you the link, but you've actually given me a mention in the back and I think this book is absolutely tremendous by the way, um, and you put special thanks Jamie for showing that you can just go and make the books you want to see in the world, so I didn't have a clue, <clears throat> I didn't know anything about Paul Sykes in 2000 and, 2012, obsessed her over for three years, uh, I'll never forget being on a building site about 2013, and uh, before that Wakefield was a place I knew existed, very much like Milton Keynes or Coventry, but I'd never met anyone from there and I'd never been. So I remember working on a building site about 2013 and, uh, you know, I've always had a thing for, like, my dad from Scotland, Glasgow, I used to live there. Um, so when I hear a Scottish accent, my ears pick up. <clears throat> and when I hear a London accent, I'm always curious because I'm fascinated with, the, with London, particularly the East End. Um, hence the reason why I'm writing a book on Jack the Ripper. But anyway, I heard this Yorkshire, Yorkshire accent that sounded a lot like Paul Sykes. So I said to this bloke, excuse me, mate, in the beer cabin. I said, where are you from? He went, Wakefield. And he must have thought I was a total lunatic because I looked at him and went, fuck off. And he looked at him and he went, no, no, like, no, seriously. I'd never met anyone from Wakefield in my entire life. So, of course, he started telling me... Um, Stories on Paul Sykes, on what the, you know, the Lups at Lout, um, the most notorious man to ever grace 
the streets of Wakefield. And uh, I started a project in 2015 and I was kind of mocked at, I was kind of laughed at. Um, very much like Roger Greenwood. I'll never forget that when he had the glass of wine and he was just like, yeah, but you're not an author. Basically, you don't know what you're doing. Nice try, kid. But um, next year, I've got knowledge to certain things I can't reveal. But next year, the film, Paul Sykes' film, which picks up from 1989, and the documentary are going to happen. And uh, it's all going to happen from Sweet Agony and my three books. So them four books are going to be merged together. The script has been written. And um, and that all started because I had an obsession. Um, very much like Steve Rafe with the craze. Uh, he walked into the story. Now, I watched... Paul Sykes at Large, um, and I read Sweet Agony by Paul Sykes, and uh, I walked into the story, and I met all the characters, and um, <sighs> seriously, you know, a lot of the characters aren't, aren't here anymore, you know, your Ronnie Trellfalls, your Davy Dumfords, um, I've become friends with certain people, like... Um, one of Paul's, one of Paul's third, three wives. Oh, um, Delroy Showers, by far the most fascinating character I've ever met in my entire life. Um, I spoke to Kenny the tailor, um, who's coming up for about 90 now, you know, from the old documentary. Oh, oh, um, yeah, spoke to lots and lots of people, um, the prison governor on the start of the Paul Sykes at Large documentary. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, so I've met everyone uh, or I've reached out to everyone. You know, not everyone has, has, um, has wanted to speak to me. And I totally understand that and I've had to respect that. And um, there's certain ones who just, you know, have told me like, like um, the... Detective, um, top chief of Wakefield Police, who's now retired. I can't name him, but um, he had uh, an incredibly venerable chapter in um, in one of the Paul Sykes book, which was twenty pages, and um, you know he knew Paul Sykes from being the absolute monster he was to oh, um, being that old kind of pathetic figure if you like who could only amuse uh, abuse people with his mouth uh, and anyone who'd listen he would often tell them better a has been than a never was been and um, quite philosophical of Paul that was very very true um, because he was a has been he had been somebody in life and now he wasn't you know not all of us are going to be I'm not saying Paul Sykes was this great historic figure all I am saying is that man will not be forgot about. Um, and he certainly left a legacy, albeit good or bad, whatever. But um, in the new year, you will start hearing noises about this forthcoming film and this documentary. Now, the budget is a couple of million pounds, which I'm told is not a great deal for a film. Um, but, you know, lots of people have said over the years, oh, you're full of shit, it's not happening. Um, being as sceptical as Roger Greenwood was to me that day, six years ago. And, uh, you know, six years on, um, yeah, the Paul Sykes PR train is going at a, a rapid speed and it's only going to pick up. And, uh, you know, I can't announce it yet, but if you knew who was going to play Paul Sykes in the film, um, a lot of people would be just be like, wow, that's like, you know, because a lot of people have asked me and have said, 
how good will this film be or if it comes out it's going to go in the bargain bin and it'll be a load of shit. Listen, when it's announced that the guy who is a bit of a half rob and um, he's very, very well known. Um, I'm not sure if it's the BBC or the ITV, but the guy is, um, oh, he is an incredibly gifted act actor um, and I've spoken to him. Spoke to him about three or four years back when he was in Panto and he was working 12 hour days, but he was reading the books and he had practiced his Yorkshire accent and, you know, he is going to put weight on and he is going to start boxing. And um, I know then, you know, if he's going to be involved and, and the people who it's been spoken of are going to do the full soundtrack, um, maybe the biggest 80s band of all, then that shows you the level that Western Edge Pictures are going to to bring the ghost of Paul Sykes back to life um, in a film which has, you know, no boundaries for how big can it go? How long is a piece of how long is a piece of string? You've only had to look at the millions and millions of YouTube views, and people are fascinated and obsessed with. This guy, yes, Paul, who is rambling on about punching sharks, but who is he? What's his real story? What's he about? What's he about? Is he really as as crazy as he comes across? Is he really as intelligent? Can he really fight? Is he is he telling the truth? Has he been to all them places all around the world? So. The Paul Sykes story in 2022 is going to be made. And, uh, you know, I think that there was talk of about it lasting for nine months um, to shoot the film. I know the film director said the best time to make any film is in the summer. So I, I, I can see this starting. I think this is going to start about the May-June time. Um, I'm also told that it's going to be made in Leeds, Pontefract and Wakefield. Um, and that's all I can say on the matter. But, uh, you know, I, c I can't help but just be a little bit smug because them six years ago, Roger Greenwood, um, very, very nice guy, actually. Lovely guy to sit with. Uh, he was telling me some of the stories, some of the things that had happened between him. And Paul, the times when he, you know, he had to go and not on in prison, visit him. Um, you know, some of that guy had a real uh, link with Paul Sykes, and I thank Roger and Nick Lord, by the way, because they're, in my opinion, produced the greatest documentary I've ever seen. Uh, and without that documentary, I would never have become an author. So thank you, Roger. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Paul Sykes. Um, but, you know, I kind of wasn't taken seriously. And, um, you know, free Amazon bestsellers later. And obviously I've encouraged other people to do it. And um, documentaries and films in the pipeline. Then, you know, that all started from me being a pure... Um, just nosy, just, uh, I would have done them books for free. I, you know, to be honest, I wasn't an author and uh, I wasn't even sure whether I was any good. As I said, I didn't have any education. I had a lot of passion. I had a lot of drive. I had a lot of get up and I will work seven days a week and make it happen. But, um, you know, here I am now, 21 books later. Uh, well, 22, I haven't got one on, but it's finished. So... 21 books on Amazon, nine Amazon bestsellers, one at one Waterstones, and um, even free documentaries. Um, and that all started just because I met the makers of Paul Sykes at large and um, walked away from that meeting. I took a lot from it, although I wasn't allowed to record anything. Um, he didn't want to be involved in anything that I was doing. But I took a lot away from it. Uh, and what I did take away with was, I'll fucking show you. 
Um, and I know personally that he's read the articles um, in the in the Yorkshire papers because I've been a lot in the papers a lot. Um, I've been in the Wakefield paper about five times. Um, Pontefract, you know, so so he must have sat back and thought that crazy bastard actually did what he said he was going to do. Um, so you know. It's um, there's a saying, particularly in boxing, and it says, "All people can have all the skill in the world, but hard work, focus, and dedication will be all that skill." So I could have been sat there with all the best English exams, and I could have been lazy, but I had nothing. But I was prepared to say, "All my pine, roll my sleeves up, and say right." Speak to everyone and uh, let's see what happens. And um, you know, I'm you know, along with I'm sure I speak with um, for the lads in the Warcry Publishing Office when I say when this does get into um, what's that word? I never can never pronounce it. Fruition. When things start to develop next year, and you know. There's, there's, there's film sets around Wakefield um, that you know I, I, I'll kind of have a great sense of satisfaction because um, you know I, we, we kind of come and we were mocked we were ridiculed and um, trolled and all this kind of thing but um, we've got there in the end and uh, thank you to the people in Warcry Publishing for the backing because um, it hasn't been easy for them Obviously, I get trolled, so they've been caught up in a lot of shit that hasn't really um, had anything to do with them, but they've just been tagged in it and, you know. But like anything in life, which is worth doing, doesn't come easy. So anyone out there, listen, I, um, oh, I, I'm not going to give the guy any um, any uh, lamblight, but there was one who's been at me for years, complete loser. Now... We released our first book the same within the six weeks of each other. Um, and I've knuckled down and forgot them bits on the side. And this guy's just trolled me. Uh, so he's got one of, I think, two books and two pamphlets, which I've had thicker than on, I've had thicker through my door by the Jehovah Witnesses. And I've knuckled down and thought, you know what? I'm not going to troll you and leave YouTube comments and, you know, I'll just sit, so knuckle down and think, you know what, fuck you, you can watch my success. And uh, he's still, two hours ago, writing stuff. <laughs> we all have the same amount of hours in a day. So, you know, that that's just a prime example of anyone who just, you know, I, I, I've been guilty at times of... Um, Wasting energy, getting involved, arguing with him. But I've learned my lesson. And the best thing you can do with people like that is kill them with success. Because every time they see your face in the paper or whatever, um, you know, that that's how people should be. That's how I would give anyone advice. Um, a lot of you have seen the, the lies and utter fucking bullshit that's been said about myself. I haven't bitten. Um... I've just got back and sat and thought, you know what? I will kill the fucking lot of you with success. And, uh, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 100 bucks. That's the way to do it. Um, so anyone who's struggling in life, just bite down on the gum shield and uh, and and get on with your own thing and forget about with what, what other people are doing with the grass. Don't worry about how green their grass is. Just focus on yourself. But, um, but listen, there's going to be lots of, um, you're going to see, particularly from about May, June, um, Western Edge Pictures, because it is their next thing on the list to do now. Um, I think they've just finished doing something this year with Billy Piper called Rare Beasts. Um, and then now is literally just all about that guy. Who is he? Putting him across in a film, putting him across in a documentary. And uh, I'm really, really excited for it. Um, as I said, I got involved with this not having any kind of idea. I just thought, I wonder what happened to him. Yeah, I know he died. I googled that. But 
what happened <clears throat> what happened in Paul Sykes's life from 1989 September the 11th when he was released from prison on, on that documentary and he stands there and he goes we've got about 30 years left so what happened from that day to 2007 what happened in them 19 years when he was the scariest thing you probably could have ever met in the flesh to this old guy walking with a hunch, kids beating him up, smashing eggs on him. How did that happen? Because uh, it didn't happen overnight. But, you know, there's a really, really powerful story in there. And like the guy who is going to play Paul Sykes said to me, the reason I'm, pro well, the reason I'm, what fascinates, to quote him as he said to me, what fascinates me with playing Paul Sykes the most is, the social justice side of it all because it was almost like life um god kind of just thought you know what you're gonna go through life being this nasty cruel person then life has done a 360 turn um and karma got him in the end <sighs> did he did he deserve the things that got he got uh in my opinion no one deserves the end in Paul Sykes got. Um, very, very sad. But, you know, unfortunately, it was it was a true story. And, uh, you know, Western Edge Pictures, Vaughan Civil, um, very, very talented director. I've watched a few of his things, Prevenge, um, British horror, fantastic movie. Um, and obviously he's went on to do the Joe Calzaghe film, um, the Oscar Pistorius film. So they know mugs, they know what they're doing. And um, when he when he when he said, "Listen, you know, because we've been a bit restless, thinking why is the film not happening?" And uh, you know, he said to us, "Listen, in film world, this is nothing. Some some certain certain films will take absolute years." So, because we've known about this um, since about June 2007, when the contracts were signed. So, we've waited four and a half years. Obviously, God had other plans because it would have filmed, it would have started filming last year, September last year, I'm told. Um, but obviously, it's back to next year. But um, this is nearly 25 minutes. I only meant to stay on it for five minutes. Um, but I just wanted you to put that across that. The film is going to, everyone, a lot of people is going to get really excited when you start to see some of the things, um, you know, they put it on the website, Western Edge Pictures, they put the official synopsis of the film. It very much sounds to me a bit like kind of Rita Sue, Bob Two-ish. It's going to be a comedy. It's going to be extremely Yorkshire, um, but I really can't wait to see it. You know, I'm looking forward to, to going on that red carpet and, um, you know, Watching it at Leicester Square, that's 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 how big I think it'll happen. Um, that's how big I, you know, I don't know whether it, whether it does or not. I don't know. They're, they're they're the film experts, and I'll leave it down to them. But um, myself and the War Cry Publishing and lots of others I know will be um, will be really really fascinated. People like Jamie Carragher, Ricky Gervais. Um, who I've often, well, not often, but I have spoke to him a few times on Twitter about Paul Sykes. And um, you wouldn't believe some of the famous people who have uh, just blown away with, mesmerised with this, who's this fucking guy? Do you know what I mean? And it, it leaves you with a thirst of knowledge. Well, I want to know more, I want to know more. And, um, you know, here I am years later and, you know, fully blown writing career, purely down. To that man because I would never have you know uh I was 36 when I when I released my first book so I'd been left school 20 years uh and if it wasn't for Paul Sykes I would never have thought Do you know what I'm gonna write books I want to know what happened to him so much that I walk in the city of Wakefield I'll upset people I didn't mean to but obviously when I'm talking about Paul Sykes then um oh, I'm sure you can appreciate the majority of the city don't have fond memories of him. Uh, so a lot of people have held me account 
um, right, you know, I get it that I've kind of woken the Paul Sykes ghost up, if you like, and, uh, you know, he'd been dead kind of since March 2007. So he was forgot about, not forgot about, but, you know, I've kind of, I mean, I, I've been, I've walked in, in Leeds City Centre and I've had people come up to me talk about Paul Sykes. Um, you know, it's almost like I lost my identity when I'd done them because people, uh, you know, didn't even know me. Like all different parts of the country when I've been, and I just said, Paul Sykes, what a book. Do you know what I mean? So, and asked me questions about him. So the the the, the interest in him out there is great because he was, um, for good or bad reasons, he was just a phenomenal character. Total one-off. Um, you know, he absolute once in a lifetime kind of um genius stroke psychopath stroke flamboyant eccentric one-off character um who you know i you know i'm here today because of my interest in that guy um so i've i've got a lot to thank paul sykes for i've got a lot to thank his um his, you know, yeah, I've been to his, been to his grave a few times and um, I have said, do you know what, thank you. Um, you know, that, as I said, it's, you know, if I'd never watched that, I would never have done a book. I'd have lived to 100, I would never have done a book. So nothing captivated me ever like that Paul Sykes documentary, the Paul Sykes book, where I went in and, you know, and then you're going to see, the year 2022 is you're going to see a lot of um, noises when the film's getting made and the documentary's getting made. So listen, guys, don't forget to click and subscribe to this channel. Um, if anyone wants to talk anymore regarding anything I've spoke about, give me a follow on Twitter at Jamie Boyle 10. Thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget all my books, who um, what I've done on Paul Sykes and, and even others, the support registered charity. So you know, one of them, I mean, one of them, I, I got asked this question, I've been asked a few times, was um, the second Paul Sykes book I'd done supported the Bradley Lowry Foundation, um, which that was the little angel from Sunderland who died a couple of years back. And a lot of people have said, how can you have that monster tied to a little angel? And uh, yeah, you know, but I've spoken to Bradley's parents and Listen, every single month we we, we pay, um, we, we, we proudly contribute to them and other things like um, the Frankie Lee Boo Fund. Um, it, one of them, you know, so and sees ministries for the first two years. So a lot of goodness has come from the books and, uh, you know, I'm sure um, even the documentary and the, and the film, which I'm going to be involved in, um, as some kind of like maybe technical advisor. So... I uh, will, you know, maybe make sure that there's more goodness to come from it. But uh, thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget to click and subscribe. God bless. Keep supporting the channel. Thank you.